Good evening. I now call the November 7th, 2018 meeting of the Hampton School Board to order. Ms. Bowers, would you please call the roll? Ms. Henry? Here. Mr. Kilgore? Here. Dr. Mason? Here. Ms. Mugler? Here. Mr. Samuels? Present. Dr. Woodhouse? Here. Ms. Cherry? Here. Please let the record reflect that all board members are present. Moving on to our invocation, I'd like to turn the meeting now over to our student liaison, Jeremy Taylor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tonight we have a senior at Phoebus High School, uh, Nassim Land, uh, who will be giving the invocation tonight. So feel free to lead us. Thank you. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight, I'll be reading a poem named Hidden Mystery by Fred Burks. In the deepest depths of you and me, in the deepest depths of we, lies the most beautiful jewel shining forth eternally. Within the precious jewel, within the priceless piece of we, lies a time beyond, beyond all time, lies a place beyond all space. Within the sacred source of radiance, lies a love beyond all love, waiting, waiting, and waiting ever so patiently, waiting for you waiting for me, waiting patiently for all to see. The beauty that is inside of me, the beauty that is, in, that is in me inside of thee. In the deepest depths of you and me, in the deepest depths of we, lies love and wisdom for all eternity. Thank you. That was wonderful. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were speaking, and you told me that you, uh, in addition to writing poetry, that you were interested in music. So can you yes, tell sir. us a little bit about, about that? Music? Yes. OK. Yes, well, music wasn't really a part of my life when I was younger until my mother actually started playing a lot of music around me. And it was like the only thing that I had that made me feel secure around a lot of stuff in this world, you know? So I started singing and I took classes and it's when I got into chorus, but marching band is my favorite thing. Now, when I was in marching band in ninth grade and 10th grade, it was nice, but when I came to Phoebus, it was actually a band that I actually am very proud of. I, I love the school. If you ever see me around school, you'll see me going crazy because I love the school with all my heart. <laughs> so marching band at Phoebus High School, Marching Phantoms, is actually a big part of music. That's why I love music so much. That's wonderful. So what's your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject is history. History. Do you, what are your plans after school? My plans, actually, I am actually taking the ASVAB this Friday because I want to actually go in the military. It's been a dream of mine. And at first, I wanted to join the Navy. But again, when I came to Phoebus and joined the ROTC here, the Marines actually embedded into my heart. So I want to become a Marine so I can serve my country. Wow. Well, you seem like a very passionate young man. and You know what you want to do. And that's, you're very inspiring. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Miss. Yes, Miss Henry. Well, you know, I have to say something because you touched my heart on all my favorite things. Because I love the high step and band at Phoebus. Got to have high step and band. Love it. And um, the Marine Corps ROTC is such a wonderful organization. They you do so much. Uh, community service, as indeed do all of our ROTCs in high schools in Hampton. Could you tell me a little bit about what's coming up? I know we're going to get to see you all in some parades soon. 
Well, what's coming up is the Holly Day Parade, but okay. I can't march in that parade for RTC because I do marching. You're being marching in the marching band. <laughs> so okay. Both of those intertwine with each other. So I have, but I love marching so much, so I chose to march instead of marching with the RTC. Okay. But we have the Holly Day Parade coming up, and we also have another other events coming up that haven't been announced yet. Okay, and then you uh, are always the ambassadors for Phoebus High School when they're guests there. And I think that's coming up with our community priorities mm -hmm. workshop. So we'll look forward to seeing you all then. And I have to tell you, I'm an old history teacher, so um, keep up that interest in history too. Yes, ma'am. Just terrific, thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Nassim, do you have some other people you'd like to introduce? Well, yes, I actually do. I, um, my biggest support, because I was scared a lot, my battalion commander, Second Lieutenant Joey Bowers, came with me, and I'm actually proud of that. I also um, have my two favorite administrative people, Dr. Stapleson and Mr. Majed back there. They <laughs> I also have Mrs. Joey Bowers. <laughs> I mean, Mrs. <laughs> My apologies. I also have Mrs. Bowers back here. She actually is a big support of me, too. So I'm actually happy. Any other board members? Madam yes, Chair. Dr. Woodhouse. Yes, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Just wanted to uh, say to you that are you aware that there is a marching band in the, in the uh, Marine Corps? Marine yes. Corps Marching Band. Yes, sir. I actually want to join the President's Own Band one day, but Staff Sergeant Rose, my recruiter, told me that they're just now adding vocalists into the Marine Corps, oh. so I am shooting to actually be a singer for the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Any other board members? Thank you so much, and we, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Mr. Taylor, for that. Now we move to item 1.03, adoption of the agenda. Do I hear a motion? Move, move adoption approve. of the approval of the agenda as presented, Madam Chairman. Second. second. It has been moved by Ms. Henry and seconded by Ms. Mugler that we approve adoption of the agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Bowles, please call for the vote. Ms. Henry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Ms. Mugler? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Motion carries. Now for our next item of business will be recognitions, and for that, I'd like to call on Ms. Kelly Gore, who is our Executive Director of Public Relations and Marketing, who will be joined by our school board member, Ms. Martha Mugler. vertically challenged, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit. There we go. Well, thank you, Ms. Cherry, Mr. Kilgore, members of the board, Superintendent Smith, and members of our Hampton Schools family. It is always a joy to spotlight our school division and the great things that our teachers and students are accomplishing. We have such talented students and staff, and this evening we would like to show off some artistic talent and begin our recognitions with the Sister Cities International Youth Artist Showcase. For decades, Sister Cities International has leveraged the power that art has to transform societies and transcend cultural boundaries through the Young Artist and Author Showcase. The showcase has given youth worldwide the opportunity to express their vision for a more unified, peaceful world through original artwork and literature. This year's theme was the art of diplomacy. Uh, which highlights the importance of citizen di diplomacy and the innovative ways citizen diplomats achieve peace through people-to-people -people interaction. Uh, students were encouraged to draw their interpretation from the experiences with sister cities and travel, exchange of international friendships, and the many ways that people cultivate friendships and relationships ac across cultures. So tonight, we are pleased to recognize Ms. Jody Nguyen. Jody, would you please come forward and join us on stage? I'll give her a round of applause as she walks out. And as, jo 
Jody's walking up, I'd like to tell you a little bit about her. Jody is a sophomore at Bethel High School and was encouraged to enter the contest by her Bethel art instructor, instructor Ms. I Chu Ash. Her artwork work was selected as one of the five national finalist pieces. So you can really see the magnitude of this award. Her artwork, along with the other winners and finalist works, will continue to travel around the country until next summer. Hampton City Schools was actually fortunate to have the opportunity to host the traveling Sister Cities International Youth Artist Showcase at the Rupert Sargent Building for a little over two weeks this past October. But if you didn't have the opportunity to visit and see all of the great work, you can see Jody's work displayed up on the screen. And we actually still have the original here upstage on an easel before um, it travels on to its next <coughs> location. So if you would please take a moment to kind of explain your concept, we'd love to hear from you. So I took, so I took the, the core basic ideas of the theme and just, you know, like take um, a spin on it, like, like take a different approach to it, to it um, basically. So the different themes and the puzzle pieces and showing that culture diversity. Yeah, taking all those ideas and think, what other ways would I present it? Like, um, like, like a bowl of fruit, how you present it? Do you like cut into different shape and put them like in arrangement? Is how you arrange them and... I would. I have a certificate for you, Jody, on behalf of um, our chairwoman, Mrs. Uh, Stevens Cherry, and our superintendent, Dr. Smith. I'd like to present you with this certificate. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it reads um, a certificate of achievement. Congratulations. This is uh, proudly presented to Jody Gwen, isn't it Gwen? Gwen. No, Gwen of Bethel High School Sister Cities Art Contest National Finalist. And it should be noted that um, before Jody leaves the stage that um, in the past seven years, Hampton has had two Sister Cities International Young Artists showcase national winners and two national finalists. So great accomplishment on your part. I love the hands in your particular um, interpretation here. Very, very beautiful. It's hard to draw hands. I don't know if people know that. Yeah, I use uh, my own hands as reference. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> They're very nice hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like any good art, sometimes you need reference from real life in order to create, you know, like good drawings. Because if you don't, then you make some mistakes in terms of like anatomy and like, you know, like drawing something you don't be not familiar with. Very nice. Well, join me in congratulations. congratulations. And as, as Jody's going back down into the audience, um, I wouldn't move on before also recognizing some of the other important guests in the audience that are here tonight that are supporting Jody. So I believe Dad is here. Would you please stand? also have her teacher, Ms. Ash, if you would please stand to be recognized. Um, I saw Mr. Saunders from Bethel, our executive principal. Um, and then we also have Dr. Vivian Greasy, who is our fine arts curriculum leader, who does so very much for our students in the program. And I don't believe there were any members of the sister cities of Hampton that were able to join us, but if so, would you stand to be recognized? Oh, Miss Ann Bain. Well, thank you for the wonderful support. All right, next we are going to move on um, to our next recognition. We are pleased to recognize Armstrong School of the Arts for earning the 2018 Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Award from the Virginia Board of Education. The award is part of the Virginia Index of Performance Awards for Advanced Learning and Achievement. The program recognizes schools and divisions that exceed state and federal accountability standards and achieve excellent goals established by the governor and the Board of Education. 15 divisions and 202 schools met all state and federal benchmarks 
and made progress toward the, the goals of the governor and the Board of Ed to earn the Distinguished Achievement Award. And Armstrong School for the Arts, you are one of those 202 schools, so congratulations. Jumping up, Mrs. Uh, Millicent Rogers, principal for Armstrong, and our assistant principal there, Heather Good, if you'll come forward. Um, we have a banner for you all to hang in the school. Congratulate you for this. Congratulations to Armstrong. I think um, we have some other proud staff members in the audience. Would you all please stand so we can recognize you? Congratulations to all of you at Armstrong, um, to the children especially, and to our administrators and our teachers there. Um, we thank you all for your hard work and dedication to our young children uh, that attend Armstrong and, um, and that all the work that you do to ensure that they have an excellent education. This is a, a great distinction you bring to our, our school system. So congratulations again. All right, and Madam Chair, that does conclude our recognitions for this evening. Thank you so much, Ms. Goral, and thank you, Ms. Mugler, for participating as well. You know, we are so honored to have a school division where we can recognize not only students like Jody, but also faculty and staff members who do such a great job in this school division. We're truly blessed to have everybody kicking on all cylinders here in Hampton City Schools. Any observations from any other board members? Thank you again. As we move forward with the consent agenda, these items in the consent agenda consist of 3.01, the personnel report number 18-21, 3.02, minutes of school board meeting of October 3rd, 2018, 3.03, minutes of the school board meeting of October 17, 2018, 3.04, certification of the closed session of October 3, 2018. 3.05, expulsion number 2018-09. 3.06, expulsion number 2018-10. 3.07, expulsion number 2018-11. And 3.08, expulsion 2018-12. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, move approval as presented. Second. Second was by Dr. Woodhouse. Yes. It has been properly moved by Mr. Kilgore and seconded by Dr. Woodhouse that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion among board members? Hearing none, Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Ms. Mugler? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Henry? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Motion. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> now, as we move further, we are going now into a very important part of the meeting, the superintendent and staff reports. And for that portion, I'd like to turn it over to our superintendent of schools, Dr. Jeffrey Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, representatives from WHRO uh, to present this evening, and uh, Ms. Goral, Ms. Kelly Goral, um, our Executive Director of Public Relations and Marketing will introduce um, our uh, this particular presentation um, for the evening. Good evening again. I have the opportunity to um, introduce our guests this evening. So, long known for its public service mission, WHRO is the only public broadcasting station in the United States that is owned by a collaboration of 19 local public school districts. And what's particularly noteworthy is that Hampton City Schools and Norfolk City Public Schools are the two original owners of WHRO. So through WHRO-TV, WHRO-FM, WHRV-FM, 
its website, and educational content delivered online to more than 286,000 students and 25,000 teachers, WHRO enriches the lives of the people of Eastern Virginia and Northeastern North Carolina every single day. Since its founding in 1961, the ownership has established educational programming and services as WHRO's core mission. As a leader in utilizing emerging technologies, today WHRO delivers more, most of its educational content online. So with us tonight, we have President and Chief Executive Officer, Bert Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt has passionately sought ways for public media to support the Hampton Roads community through broadcast programming and educational services in his 10 years as President and CEO of WHRO. He's been instrumental in the development and circulation of numerous virtual learning solutions for educators, including the production of online courses used in high schools throughout the state, the operation of the Commonwealth's Virtual Virginia Online High School Program. And also joining us tonight with Mr. Schmidt is Brian Callahan, the Chief Education Officer at WHRO-TV. Mr. Callahan is originally from the industrial Midwest, Cleveland, Detroit, and Michigan. Brian is a former classroom teacher with more than 23 years experience utilizing technology and education from primary through post-secondary settings. He has made hundreds of presentations nationwide on educational technology issues and innovations. But tonight I believe it's Mr. Schmidt that will be doing that presentation so he can't add that to his hundreds. So Mr. Schmidt, if you would come up. And as I'll he's coming forward, I would like to also, Madam Chair, members of the board, to acknowledge that uh, Mrs. Martha Mugler serves as the board representative uh, for WHRO and uh, certainly um, serves the board quite well in that capacity. So. I think my report's over. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Smith, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak with you. Uh, my name is Bert Schmidt. Thank you for that introduction. I haven't quite had that before during one of these presentations. Uh, I am very honored to be here because, as was mentioned, you are one of the founding two schools that founded WHRO in 1961 when Hunter Andrews, who was the chair of this body back in that day, and, and Vince Thomas, who chaired the Norfolk School Board, got together to use this new technology called television and said, let's use it for other than selling soap. Let's actually use TV to educate and they created Home Room One, which is what WHRO stands for, Home Room One, H-R-O. So if you learn nothing else, you at least know that part. Um, today we're owned by 19 school divisions all around the greater Hampton Roads area. Um, I have a report for you. I hope you all have a copy of this report in front of you. I'm gonna be brief, but go through some of it. I do have to say, um, uh, it's a pleasure being back here. I was here as a judge, um, I guess it was May of last year at Bethel High School where uh, the freshmen, freshmen were doing their um, video and, and PowerPoint presentations on the negative impacts on social media. So I got to be a judge and, and it was quite experience, an experience to see some of those reports from, from freshmen at Bethel. So it's, it's great to be back, of course, as always. Um, and Holly Saunders, I wanna thank for doing that. Into the report, uh, page one. The leadership from, from Hampton, which is of course outstanding, as mentioned, Martha Mugler is your representative. I wouldn't I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Phyllis, though. She's been around a long time, much longer than I've been around the WHRO, and, and she's actually chaired the, the, the ownership body, tw I think twice now, right? Um, so I wanna thank you, Phyllis, for your long history. And of course, Dr. Smith works with all of our superintendents um, on a regular basis as we discuss um, regional educational strategies at WHRO. Also want to point out John Eagle and Jennifer Lockett, both who've taken leadership positions in the various committees we have that work regularly uh, at the station. Getting into the report now on page two, uh, eMedia VA, which is our educational repository of learning objects. This is a free service to every public, private, and homeschooler in Virginia. We have a contract with the Department of Education to keep that free. We have over 100,000 learning objects. These can be videos, audios, games, apps, lesson plans that your teachers can use in the classroom. They're all correlated to the Virginia Standards of Learning. We have co content partnerships with national organizations like the Smithsonian, National Archives, Library of Congress, but also more importantly, local uh, partnerships throughout Virginia with organizations who have great educational content, but they can't get folks to go to their website. So we bring it into a portal, and then it's easy for your teachers to find what they're looking for with a, a keyword search, an SOL search, uh, a very valuable tool for teachers bringing digital content in the classroom. As we know, kids want that digital content. So eMedia VA is something the schools ask for 
about eight or nine years ago now. And so we're, it's been quite successful. And you have actually a single sign-on solution. So when teachers sign into your network, they're automatically uh, signed into eMedia VA. Also on page one, do, we do a lot of professional development, both on site with our uh, special topic forums, as well as online through our teacher line service. Um, and on page three, we also have a significant uh, uh, space of, of workforce development. Uh, I know this is not quite your area, but we do have uh, GED online. We have about 4,000 courses in 18 different industry sectors. We have workplace readiness modules, those soft skills that people want, employers want, things like, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, math and, and, and reading for information and, and health and wellness, uh, things that uh, employers certainly are looking for. Page four, our student services. Of course, one of the, uh, the big things the schools asked for years ago were online courses. It's a big requirement now. We have developed for you 24 high school online courses. The list is in page paragraph two. Algebra, trig, bi astronomy, biology, chemistry, earth science, economics and personal finance, English 9, 10, 11, and 12, French 1, geometry, health and PE 9 and 10, math analysis, oceanography, physics, psychology, Virginia and US world history and geography, 1500 AD to present, and I skipped a line, but uh, U.S. and Virginia government as well. Uh, we also create a digital citizenship uh, module uh, per requested by the, by the schools um, to deal with um, dealing with di how to be online appropriately for middle school age kids. And, and we recently provided a middle school career investigations uh, module to all the schools, actually throughout the entire Commonwealth. Um, and you, you make great use of these courses. Now, again, we're the manufacturer. If you will, we make the courses and we give them to you and you use them how you want. I know, I think you're using them primarily in a blended model through Google Docs, using the, the content within the course. Other schools and other divisions will use them a completely different way, but they're your courses to use however you want, so we're, we're glad you're getting use of those. Uh, item two, we found while the, the online courses are an interactive experience, um, we also found that people simply sometimes want just the teacher online that you can click on and watch a class. So we've done that with three courses now, Algebra, Geometry, and Earth Science, where we have literally taken every single lesson that you would experience if you're a child going through the class, and we've put every lesson online using a master teacher, some whiteboard technology. So if a child misses a class because they are sick, you've got a snow or hurricane day, you, whatever the reasons are that they're out of school, they don't have to miss that class, at least for these three courses, because they can be assigned to watch the course through this master teacher online, and all these uh, resources are available through eMedia VA. And again, they're all free for you. Um, also stay on uh, number three on this page, Virtual Virginia, as mentioned, we've been operating Virtual Virginia since day one, and you had 88 students who uh, took Virtual Virginia courses last year. And on page five, we love to celebrate smart kids. We do that in a number of ways. Our PBS Kids Writers Contest, this is for uh, children K through five. They write and illustrate stories. They submit them to us. We have winners. We take those, those animated characters that they create, and we actually make a TV show of them. We make the, have those characters come to life, and all of a sudden their characters are alive and moving, and, and the children are amazed by the bringing the, their wonderful stories to life and that's been going on for quite a long time of course the virginia bee spell uh, uh the virginia pilot spelling bee has been going on now we're uh, coming up in our 12th year of, of the bee you can see the participation there and great computer challenge has been going on for over 30 years uh, we have teams from k through 12 who compete in various software programs and you can see on the following page page six you had a great representation last year and, and frankly a lot of winners so uh, congratulations on that um, just item number six, just briefly, uh, within all that paragraph, education now spots, if you're a regular viewer of WHRO, you occasionally see spots with school superintendents talking about best practices within their division. Well, we just finished up a spot with Dr. Smith. I'm told it's in editing as we speak, so that should be coming out soon. I was hoping that to be able to show it to you tonight. You got off the hook. You're lucky, but uh, that'll be coming out soon. So you'll be seeing uh, Dr. Smith on our air um, talking about the 16 academies, I think is the, what, your, what your focus is on. So we're, we're looking forward to get, getting that on, on our air. Um, I'm gonna jump to page eight. Um, we have been uh, fortunate to receive a, a significant gift from Jane Batten to do environmental education. And 
Uh, we've, we've got an uh, Earth Science online course. We've got the video course I mentioned. Um, but one of the things we've been doing, and it's a really cool project, a few years ago, the Williamsburg Health Foundation came to us and they asked us to create, uh, you'll remember Schoolhouse Rock? Some of you my age will remember that? <laughs> um, where it's a card, it's a, animated feed story with, with music. Well, we did a whole series around health, but now with this new environmental initiative, we're doing um, schoolhouse rock, rock type videos around environmental issues. And those of you certainly educated know that when you walk your dog, you should not leave the remains in the grass because it's bad for the environment. You know, the runoff, the rain comes, it runs off. Well, we have created, and I'm giving you the, the, the hint here to play it, it's a, this is a short version of what's called Scoop the Poop. <laughs> Listen up, it's Scoop Dog Sam. Yeah, woof woof. I'm Scoop Dog Sam and I'm here to drop some knowledge on you. I may be man's best friend, but let's not pretend that you love everything I do. I need a little help picking up after myself and uh, that's where you come in. So when I decorate the lawn, you can bag it and trash it before decomposition begins. Break it down. There's a bunch of bad bacteria in every mess I make. But you got the skills to stop the stink from getting to our waterways. All you gotta do is grab a bag. Hey. Watch your step and scoop the poop. When you're hanging out with your canine pals, follow the funk and scoop the poop. Scoop doggy dog. Wolf. So, so this, this Green Beat series along with our Health Beat series are meant for schools to use and you can use them in your morning announcements or however you so feel, they're yours. We're making them for you. So however it works with, a, with health and environment to be used for, of course, a younger audience, although we've been getting great reaction from adults as well, especially on this one. Um, uh, page nine, our Ready to Learn services. I won't go through all the detail here, but we provide a whole list of services for early childhood ed. We've got, of course, our, our kids' website. We have both a STEM and literacy van. We have reading camps. We have coding camps, <laughs> reading buddy programs. We've got library corners. Anytime is learning time programs, a whole host. And you can see on, on page 11 at the end in blue, uh, all the various ways that the division has you taken advantage of those services. and. Again, doesn't cost any more, so ask away. We'll keep coming out with our folks and, and working with your preschool folks. As school board members, what you really care about, of course, is the bottom line. Page 12 is your uh, financial return on your investment. You invest each year $2 per student with WHRO. Last year, re you received savings and value of $782,000. That's a 16 to one return on your investment. And I'm happy with that to take any questions. Thank you so much. Are there any questions by board members or any observations? Well, I've just got to say that when you talk about WHRO, everybody gets excited. And um, we're very happy to have you here tonight, but we're especially pleased that Ms. Mugler serves on that board. And for years, we've known about Ms. Henry's passion. Um, even when I worked in the school division, whenever Ms. Henry mentioned WHRO, just lit her face up so um, and I can see why because you all do so many things to not only help our teachers in terms of education but also this community and families who tune in I know when my um, grandkids come here <clears throat> Daniel Tiger's neighborhood is one of the go. favorite and I found myself watching it even after they leave <laughs> especially because you know I don't know if you watch it but there was a baby born and um, Daniel had to figure out how to deal with that <laughs> but um, I just want to again just say how much we appreciate the partnership and how lucky we are to have such a partnership any others okay thank you thank so you very much, much. <laughs> thank you Bert. Madam Chair and members of the board, our uh, next report will be the financial report and Ms. Dorch, our chief financial officer, will provide the board with the November 2018 financial report. Good evening, Madam Chair Cherry, Vice Chair Kilgore, school board members, Dr. Smith and all in attendance. It is my pleasure to present the monthly financial report. Um, you will notice in this report that there is a new 
schedule that's provided. It is a comparative statement for revenues, expenditures, and encumbrances. And this just provides a comparison between the current fiscal year and the prior fiscal year. And this report will be added going forward as well. So looking at our revenue at the end of September 2018, it is trending um, lower, but this was expected due to the low August sales tax payments that we previ previously discussed for the August 2018 board report. We are expecting to get all of our money by the end of December, so we should be fine by then. Um, looking at our expenditures and encumbrances, they are actually trending a little higher, but this is just mainly due to the timing of payments, <coughs> and we are, we've been encumbering funds sooner than we did last year. You also find a list of transfers to and transfers from Category 9 technology. And then I want to end the report just talking about our September 30th fall membership. So as of September 30th, our K through 12 average daily membership or ADM was around 18,831. Um, just for comparison, our budget was set at 18,600. So once the state gathers the information from the fall report, they're gonna perform a reforecast. And that reforecast will be released to divisions about mid-December. Once we receive that information, we will share the results back with the school board. And where there's a need for any adjustments, we will take the necessary action. Um, but it is important to remember that our final payments are always based on the March 31st spring membership. So we're hoping that our ADM will continue to stay above where we're budgeted so we will have a positive impact for our budget for this year. That includes my presentation. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dorch. Are there any questions any board members have? Thank you, we appreciate it. Madam Chair and members of the board, that concludes the superintendent and staff reports. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Moving on to the next item, item five is the hearing of any delegations or presentation of any written communications or petitions. Ms. Bowers, I have received none, have you? No, I haven't. Okay, thank you. As we move on to our deliberation, item six, the deliberation items include 6.01, VSBA proposed legislative positions, 6.02, revision of school board policy EA, support services and property management. 6.03, revision of school board policy EB, school crisis, emergency management, and medical emergency response plan. 6.04, deletion of school board policy EBA, buildings and grounds inspection. 6.05, revision of school board policy EBCB, safety drills. 6.06, .06, revision of school board policy EC, buildings and grounds management and maintenance. This was formerly titled integrated pest management on school property. And 6.07, revision of school board policy EEAB, school bus scheduling, routing, and bus stop policy. We're going to begin tonight with 6.01 VSBA proposed legislative positions, and I'll now turn the meeting over to our vice chair, Mr. Joe Kilgore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as the fellow board members know, I am representing this board at the VSBA annual convention uh, in their delegate, as a delegate in their legislative uh, positions meeting. And so at our last work session, I distributed to all the boards copies of all of the new, and I say new, their new and amended legislative positions that will be voted on at the annual conference next week. And so uh, there's a total of 11 positions. Seven of them are brand new. Um, that were pulled together by the uh, legislative committee uh, this past spring. And then uh, four of them are amended. And I really say four, there's actually three amendments and then there was a, a blanket one that, that actually amended 16 by just review of uh, the VSBA staff. So I was gonna go through them at a high level um, one at a time and basically 
I'm really looking for the board's consensus that, uh, that we support these legislative positions. And if we don't, um, you give me uh, your position that I then bring to the, to the body next week. Um, I will point out uh, that all of these were unanimously approved uh, by the Legislative Policy or Positions Committee for VSBA, of which Mr. Samuels was a member. So um, the first one is a new position, and it deals with at-risk add-on. Uh, in particular, the at-risk add-on program, which is uh, part of the basic aid, targets additional resources to schools um, for uh, divisions based on the percentage of students that are eligible for free lunch. And VSBA, or Virginia currently, uh, Virginia's current at-risk add-on percentage of 1 to 14 percent uh, falls well below the national average of 29 percent. So uh, VSBA supports increasing the percentage of the at-risk add-on funding to more closely align with the national average. The second legislative position is a, an amended position addressing fair assessment of limited English language proficiency students. And it's, it's fairly um, just general in its changes, but the rationale behind the changes are that they intended to take statements and make them more general to clarify and update the advocacy language to better reflect current assessments and resources needed for English learners. Uh, and the third legislative position, again, is an amended position for safe school environments, um, one that I really appreciated, which was that they, they added wording to the position to the proposal, that wants, um, and I'll just read it, including additional state resources devoted to student mental health. Uh, the rationale behind the changed wording is that it provides uh, comprehensive preventative state efforts uh, to ensure student safety must include resources devoted to student mental health in addition to other safety measures. The fourth legislative position uh, is a new one addressing graduation and completion index calculations for English learners. And uh, I, I'll go into a little bit of the detail. Um, what the VSBA wants is uh, currently there's no adjustment for English learners when they come to the division as far as calculation in the uh, graduation and completion index. So they wanted to make the language be more realistic. Um, students entering Virginia schools with both limited English language skills as well as limited formal schooling of any kind, including many older students, um, they want to propose changes that would help uh, to adjust the state calculation of the graduation and completion index to better reflect where many student learners start their schooling in Virginia. Uh, and then the fifth position is again a new uh, proposal which is uh, amend the standards of quality to include uh, dedicated funding for mental health student support positions and secure school security personnel. Um, Currently, uh, VSBA supports amending the standards of quality to include specific funding for mental health professionals and school safety and security personnel. And the standards of quality currently do not reflect the current needs of school divisions. Um, They're out of date and they have not kept pace with the needs of students today. The sixth proposal legislative position is an amendment um, specifically uh, to funding for governor school. Uh, some school divisions have full day governor school programs and are funded using the same mechanism 
as those that provide part day governor school programs. And so uh, the proposal is that uh, since the full day programs require greater funding, uh, that this be accounted for in the budget appropriations. The seventh position is, or seventh proposal, is again a new one to amend the Virginia Code to allow full time employees of retired Virginia law enforcement officers in, in school security. Uh, the interesting thing here is that um, there is a Virginia Code uh, related to the Virginia retirement system. Uh, that does not permit law enforcement officers to be hired in full-time security positions without a loss of their retirement benefits. So the VSBA supports um, amending that to such that the current law would allow us to hire uh, retired police officers to be uh, full-time security personnel. Um, The eighth position is one that modifies proffer limitations to restore important contributions to growing school divisions. And in particular, what this does is um, there are VSBA supports removing the limitations on proffers as addressed in the Virginia Code, essential for new school divisions and other needs driven by expanding uh, development. And there was legislation, it was a state bill 549 back in 2016 uh, that changed the uh, cash proffer system in residential developments. And that has created a significant problem um, for local governments across the Commonwealth to provide for infrastructure. The ninth legislative proposal is color vision deficiency and its negative impact on school performance. This again is a new proposal uh, and the proposal goes into uh, the things that the VSB would like to advocate for, uh, advocating for universal screening of colorblindness, requiring the, the Virginia DOE uh, to include colorblind, colorblindness screening as part of the student's regular vision screening, requiring the DOE negotiate new testing contracts, information and test items to be designed to be visible to children who are, uh, who are uh, color vision deficient and requiring the DOE uh, to strongly consider producing future educational software and testing to accommodate for the large number of color vision deficient children. Uh, currently, <clears throat> Research indicates that in Virginia, we have about 21,000 students that are uh, color vision deficient. And, and they believe that <coughs> color deficiency uh, negatively impacts school performance. So uh, the 10th proposal relates to increasing student access for internships and apprenticeships. And I think we have a particular interest in this one and the VSBA supports establishing a tax credit for businesses that host students for, from a high school technical center or specialty school as interns or apprentices in a qualified field that aids students in completing CTE courses, course requirements, or in preparing for career certifications. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, and then the 11th proposal is the one that I talked about, which is sort of a blanket of it, it went through the legislative uh, positions committee instructed VSBA staff to review all of the existing legislative positions to identify which have either been eliminated because of the objectives being accomplished or to identify positions um, which should be revised uh, that contain outdated language. Uh, and the example is like no child left behind has been replaced by the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. And I won't go through all of those, but there were 16 of those, and they just uh, tweaked the language there. So, that's it in a nutshell. It's actually much longer than that. Um, so uh, if anyone 
has any comments about any of that, um, uh, I'd be happy to take that. Otherwise, I'm kind of looking for a consensus that everybody wants me to support these VSBA positions. Um, at first, I want to thank you and, and Mr. Samuels for your work on getting these things uh, established and for the work you're going to do in that meeting. Is, is, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Being, I've been to that meeting a couple times. Um, it may sound like that the Virginia School Board Association is just asking for money, um, but they're, they're critical issues and critical needs that are being addressed in this, and I think that's very important. And I also think that it, there's a, an issue that sort of underlies things like number five when it talks of standards of quality funding, which is always, it's like that threshold that's always ahead of you and you never catch up with because there's always someone in the state that says, well, we're going to refigure the SOQ funding in a more fair way. And that never seems to get to where we need it to be. It's always going to happen, and it never seems to happen. But the other thing that, that comes up is when the state does do something like, say, we're going to give you a, a raise for staff, they never say it's going to be for staff in September. They say it's going to be staff in January, which we don't pay people like that. And it's going to be for SOQ positions. So all the positions they were talking about in item number five, like security personnel or mental health, they don't figure in any of that at all. So when we get a request, you know, we're trying to meet a staff raise. It's only for SOQ positions, and when we're, we have other people that we need, like these positions they're talking about, that aren't covered by SOQ funding and not covered by raises to SOQ funding. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's very, I appreciate you all going through this, and it sound, it's tedious when you're doing it, but it's very, very important. And we need to understand that standards of quality is a vague way of saying these are the key things in education. And then there's always somebody in the legislature who says, well, we, we think too much money is spent outside the classroom, and we only want to have, we want you to prove that such and such percentage of your money is spent on classroom teachers. Well, all right, the classroom teacher has a computer, and the computer needs a technical assistant, and the technology department doesn't count in that. But guess what? That's an expenditure of the school system. So we kind of wish that people would be realistic about the standards of quality and really do the revision that they say they're going to do. And we appreciate that the School Board Association is bringing this to their attention again because it's really important. Because there's more than just a teacher in the classroom with chalk that makes your child safe and looked after and all those other things that we want to do. So thank you very much for doing this for us, Mr. Kilgore. And I think you could say that uh, as far as my contribution to the consensus, I'm for all those things. Thank you. Any other comments? Let me ask uh, mm -hmm. this one thing. Uh, I'm, I'm a wonderful report. Um, and it is something that we that we need, and I'm all for, you know, casting my lot that way to support it. Um, but one of the things that Miss um, Henry mentioned, and and it, and it was sort of uh, weighing on my mind also, was that um, how reasonable is it for us to be asking for all of this when we know that it is going to be requesting a large amount of money? And and should we even be worried about that? Just you know, go ahead and ask anyway. I think I have the answer to your question. Um, the Virginia School Board Association asked for the collective body, 132 divisions, to help uh, develop uh, proposals, legislative position proposals. The VSBA employs lobbyists, and those lobbyists help the legislators in Richmond, um, they advocate for these positions. But one of the other critical roles that they do is when legislators in Richmond develop um, bills that they want to bring forward, sometimes they actually touch base with our lobbyists before they bring them forward 
<laughs> because our lobbyists are paid to ensure that we do what's right for the public school systems uh, in Virginia. Um, and also that it's like going to an expert and saying, help me with this, I've got, I've got this position. And these proposals and positions help guide those lobbyists so that they are collectively um, prioritizing and and, um, and and working toward what we as a body, as an association, want to advocate for. Um, so it's, it's not always uh, funds. I will tell you an example would be um, when there was legislation that almost made it to the finish line about grading schools A through F. And, and our lobbyist actively worked against that and explained why it was a bad idea. No funding really involved other than maybe the threat that they would pull funding. But um, so we use these positions to ensure that the, the body's collective direction is communicated to the lobbyist. Thank you, Ed. That's what I needed to hear. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Any other comments or questions? I'll just comment a little bit yes, more Ms. on um, Mr. Kilgore's explanation. It also kind of, there's some master document, if you will, that, that provides what our positions are as a Virginia uh, School Board Association. And so, um, that also kind of serves our legislators as well, not just our lobbyists uh, for the association, but so that there is a level of um, awareness that can be created through these positions that this is, this is what um, the individuals at, at uh, the public school level believe. Um, and, and so it, it helps um, also I believe to educate our legislators and keep them in tune with where we are as public educators and what our positions are and what our beliefs are and um, whether whether that always gets support from our legislatures is another story but um, it, it, it lays a, a good foundation um, of information <coughs> for for the folks up in Richmond to kind of get a good feel for for what public educators think our, our legislation should look like. SOQ is something that's been talked about forever and ever. Um, and it, as Phyllis alluded, it's, it's never been really fully funded and, um, and so forth. But anyway, it, it serves as a great source of information on a lot of levels and also for board members who go and participate in, um, in the, um, the legislative week uh, events that we go and lobby with our own local legislators. Um, a lot of times these positions are used um, and, and a lot of times we'll focus as a, um, um, an association on s some specific areas of those positions to, to work with our legislators on and really um, it always happens that you know there's a bajillion bills that get put forward, Ms. Bain always keeps us surprised on what's, what's out there and, and um, it, you know, starts out that there are hundreds of bills that get presented and, um, and it kind of gets narrowed down and narrowed down and narrowed down. But the, the, when we are working on those um, bills that come before us each year, we use this uh, positions document as kind of our basis for our um, our work in in that area and uh, it's a springboard for for our positions on that so hope that well yes I, and sense. I asked that question simply because of the 12 that were presented to us tonight that I, I you know most of those are asking for funds I, I understand the explanation for everything else but specifically the ones that were read to us tonight is is funds and so that was the reason why i felt like that we needed to bring some clarity for those who may be listening in the community of what those are all about and whether we should pursue it because of the funds or not 
makes sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? All right. Any other comments, questions? Madam Chair, I'd just like to say I'm glad to see that mental health made it to the table. I would have been disappointed had you not said that. I can tell you right now. I even had a note by your name, Dr. Mason. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So can we pretty much, as consensus, have Mr. Kilgore move forward with yes. this? I'm good. Yes. We're okay? Thank Mr. You. Kilgore, I want to thank you also for, I know you said it was going to be high level, but it was, it was very comprehensive too because we got it. We understood it. And, um, we are, I think we're very fortunate to have you as our delegate for that. I've already heard from um, a couple of people from VSBA already that you're the right man for the job because it's pretty well known that, that you are the person that makes sure that all T's are crossed and all I's are dotted when it comes to pretty much any document, and we do appreciate that. So good luck with all your work you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we move on with the other items for deliberation 6.02 through 6.07 are there any questions by board members because miss reeves says she's ready to answer any we may have any questions okay hearing none we will move those to action for the next meeting now as we move to our items for action they consist of 7.01, Review of School Board Policy BBA, School Board Powers and Duties. 7.02, Review of School Board Policy BDDD, Quorum. 7.03, Review of School Board Policy BDDE, Rules of Order. 7.04, Review of School Board Policy BF, Board Policy Manual. 7.05, Review of School Board Policy BFB, Policy Development, Evaluation, Approval, and Dissemination. 7.06, Review of School Board Policy BHD, Board Member Compensation. And 7.07, .07, Review of School Board Policy BJ, School Board Memberships. I would add that all of these policies have been indicated as having five-year reviews with no revisions recommended. Do I hear a motion? Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Cherry, I would like to make a motion. I move that we um, approve these action items as a block, 7.01 through 7.07 .07, uh, for approval. Second. It has been properly moved by Ms. Mugler and seconded by Mr. Kilgore that we approve these items 7.01 through 7.07 .07 as a block. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Bowers, please call for the vote. Dr. Mason? Aye. Ms. Mugler? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Ms. Henry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Motion carries. Now moving to item eight, deliberation first read. These consist of 8.01, Review of School Board Policies, CBG-R, Evaluation of Superintendent Evaluation System. 8.02, Review of School Board Policies, CF, School Building Administration. 8.03, Review of School Board Policy, GB, General Human Resources Policies. 8.04, Review of School Board Policies, GC, PA and GCPA-R, Reduction in Workforce. 8.05, Review of School Board Policy, GCPF, Suspension of Employees. 8.06, Revision of School Board Policy, KH, Public Gifts to Schools. And 8.07, Review of School Board Policy, KND, Bond or Insurance for Safekeeping of Government Property. These, again, are all first reads, so if there are any clarifying questions, we will be asking them, but we will ask Ms. Reeves. I believe you have the first two. Ms. Ruth, you have the next three, and Ms. Dorch, you have the next two. So if you could provide information, we would appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the first is um, policy GB, CBG-R, <laughs> evaluation of the superintendent the actual evaluation system. 
this was reviewed on a five-year review and no um, no revisions are recommended um, at this time the, um, the the second which is another board policy CF school building administration reviewed um, with no um, n no revisions recommended thank you are there any questions for clarity for Ms. Reeves okay we'll now go to Ms. Ruth good evening good evening uh, the first policy that I have on the agenda is policy GB, General Human Resources Policies. This is a five-year review with no recommended changes. The next policy is uh, GCPA reduction in workforce, and there are, it's a five-year review, and there are no recommended changes to the policy itself. Um, the next item on the agenda is GCPA-R, which is the regulations that go along with the policy to reduction in force, and there are a few changes there. Um, it is, again, a five-year review, and what you'll find is some updates to titles, also an update to the criteria for um, individuals that, how we identify who might be affected by a reduction in force. Um, first change is on page one, just a title change. Um, and also on page two, just a title change to the Alternative and Adult Education Learning Center. Um, for clarity, we've added the Virginia Department of Education on page three. And probably the most significant change really in the policy is on page three. Uh, under performance, where we indicate that performance concerns documented outside of the formal evaluation process will be considered as criteria for a potential reduction in force. And by that, we're referring to as a, for instance, if you have an employee who is having attendance issues, and they may not it may not be something that is documented in their evaluation, but they have received a series of memos to, to address the fact that they need to improve their attendance. We would consider those memos in addition to anything that was written in a formal evaluation process. Um, and then... Under, uh, beginning on page seven with job families, there are several updates to titles. Um, and I believe that that is it for the changes for that particular regulation. Um, the last human resources policy that is on the agenda is policy GCPF, suspension of employees. And this policy is also a five-year review with no recommended changes. Okay. Okay. Now, Ms. Dorch, you're next. Good evening. Good evening. The first policy, KH, public gifts to schools. This is a five-year review. Um, minor changes, just removing Hampton City in the first paragraph and adding school board in the last paragraph so that the policy consistency says school board throughout. The next policy, KND, bond or insurance for safekeeping of government property. This is a five-year review, no revisions recommended. Thank you. Okay, um, thanks to all of you all for explaining those. And these will be moved to our deliberation agenda for our next meeting. Now as we move to information items number nine, Item 9.01, next meeting. Actually, we are very excited that we are coming up on our Community Priorities Workshop, which will be taking place on November 29th at Phoebus High School at 6 p.m. And following that, we will be back here for a televised meeting on December 5th here at 6.30 at Jones Magnet Middle School. Is there any information from the superintendent? Madam Chair, no further business um, from the superintendent. Any board members have information they'd like to share? Okay, hearing that we have no further business to come before this board, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>